Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of The Golf Nerd. Do you know what the average driver length is on the PGA Tour? It's 45 inches. Do you know what the average driver length is that you buy off the shelf? It's 45 and 3 quarter inches. Now why do you think the best players in the world are playing a driver that's 3 quarter inches shorter than the average amateur? It's because they are playing for a whole lot of money and they need the extra control. So if the best players in the world are shortening their drivers, maybe we ought to be thinking about doing that too. This video is going to cover the steps to shorten a driver in the right way so you end up with a playable club. But before I move on, have you subscribed to the channel yet? I'd love to have you join the community and if you subscribe you'll know exactly when I upload new content and if you get some value out of this video please hit the like button it really lets me know that I'm providing the type of content that you all are looking for so now let's talk about shortening a driver the first thing I want you to know is all the research that I did I watched every video on YouTube where someone shortened a driver and I watched every video I could find about shorter drivers that come stock that way, like the TaylorMade Mini. In every case, the distance loss was almost nothing and the dispersion improvement was significant. So based on all the research I did, I decided to really try to do it the right way and I shortened this driver for this season. It is playing at 44 and a quarter inches long, which is one and a quarter inches longer than a three wood. My club head speed has gone up this year and my average distance has improved this year. So just because you shorten a driver does not mean you have to sacrifice anything. It really usually means that you just gain in accuracy. So having said all that, let's talk about the steps to do this and do it the right way. The first thing you have to realize is when you're talking about a three wood that plays at 43 inches long, it has a shaft in it that is in excess of 70 grams. Now modern drivers are now usually stock 50 to 60 grams. You start cutting off material, it's going to get even lighter and you're going to end up with something potentially in the 40 gram range, which is really just too light. As clubs get shorter, the shafts need to get longer so that the club feels balanced in your hands. So the very first thing you need to know is you're going to have to replace the shaft to do this the right way and you're going to have to replace it with something that's at least 10 grams heavier. Now there's two reasons for that. One is the feel in your hands. The second is you need to add more mass to the shaft because that's going to help offset some of the swing weight change when you start cutting off the grip end of a shaft because the swing weight is going to change a lot. So you need a, a shaft that is at least 10 grams heavier than what was stock in your driver. The second thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a weight kit. Almost all modern drivers have a replaceable weight so you can dial in like a fitting, you can dial in the weight in the head for a specific swing weight. Now it's going to be very difficult to predict with any level of accuracy how much weight you're going to need to add because the rules that you'll see on the internet are just approximations and they're not going to be accurate enough. So you're going to need a weight kit that gives you two gram increments say from like five grams to 17 grams kind of thing so that you can make the necessary adjustments to get the swing weight where you want it. The last thing that you're going to need to consider is again on the shaft itself when we cut off an inch off the end of the shaft, we are cutting off the stiffest part of the shaft. The stiffest part of any golf shaft is in the handle. So when you take an inch off, you're reducing the stiffness of the, of the shaft itself. The other thing to consider, you're going to have to add weight to the head. When you add additional mass to the, to the club head and you've shortened the shaft, you're really going to introduce a lot more flex into the shaft. As a result of that, whatever stiffness you currently play, you're going to have to go up one stiffness. So if you play a regular, you're going to have to play a stiff. If you play a stiff, you're going to have to play an extra stiff. That is the type of thing you're going to have to do to get the same type of feel that you like in your golf club. To summarize, 
10 grams heavier weight kit and a stiffer shaft by one stiffness. So once you've done those things, you're gonna need to really dial in your swing weight and you're gonna need a couple tools. The first is you're gonna need a tape measure. The second is you're going to need a digital scale. I'll link to one for Amazon, but know that it's a affiliate link and I will get a small commission if you buy from that link. So the first thing we have to do, we have to find the balance point for the club. So just take a guess at how much weight you have to add. And the approximation is for every half inch you cut off of a, a club, it changes the swing weight by three points. Now for every swing weight that you try to add back, it's approximately two grams. So say you shorten this club by an inch, so that would be six swing weight points or 12 grams. If you went an inch and a half like I did, then it's 18 grams and nine swing weight points. But again, that's an approximation. But you can't buy an 18 gram additionally heavy weight to put in a head, and that's another reason why you have to go to the heavier shaft. So anyway, to find the balance point, you just stick out your index finger, find the point on the club where it'll balance on your, the tip or the edge of your finger. Once you've got that point, just right through the center line of your finger, just take your other hand and pinch right on that point. There it is. Take my other hand, pinch on it again. I've got this point right here. This is the balance point for the club. Take your tape measure, measure from the end of the grip down to where you're pinching. This is 32 and 5 eighths inches. You're going to want to write that down. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to weigh it on the digital scale set to grams. This club is weighing at 333 grams. Finally, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a swing weight calculator. There's a link in the description for a swing weight calculator that you can visit. On the swing weight calculator, you're gonna e enter the measured length to the balance point, like I just said, it was the 32 and 5 eighths inches, and you're gonna enter in the 333 grams. Make sure that you've set to inches and to grams when you put those numbers in because you can also do metric. Once you put that in information in the calculator and hit calculate, it's gonna tell you what the swing weight is. From that point, you can make subtle adjustments to get the swing weight where you want it. My recommendation is look at your three wood swing weight. You should be able to Google that and find it in the specs. And whatever the, the swing weight for your three wood is, that's a good starting point or maybe one swing weight uh, heavier than that. So say it's a D1, maybe you wanna play your driver at a D2. So I started out with this set to D4 and it was really just too heavy. Now, one thing about adding a bunch of weight to the head is it'll increase your smash factor. It, it makes the head much more efficient when you add a bunch of weight to it. Um, but the downside is by the end of 18 holes, I would just feel like I didn't have enough gas in the tank to really hit the tee shots that I wanted to hit. So I ended up moving to a D1. Um, and this club plays really, really well at a D1 uh, with that heavier shaft and, and whatnot. Uh, so it's really just personal preference and experimentation. But once you find a swing weight that works, I think you'll really be happy with the outcome but it'll take a few rounds and it'll take a little bit of experimentation until you find one that does. So I know that's a lot of information, guys. So if you have any questions about how to do this with your setup, just ask in the comments below and I will try my hardest to get back to every one of you. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. It, again, it just lets me know that I'm making the type of content that you wanna see. That's it from the Golf Nerd. Hit them long and straight and I'll see you next time. <laughs>